music, R&B, hip hop, pop, I still get reggae, EDM, indie, old school, and sports talk, right here, worldstarhitradio.com. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Connecting Atlanta Radio, hosted on the number one fastest growing internet radio station here in Atlanta, WorldStarHitRadio.com. Um, we would like to give a special shout out to Marcus, who I once had an opportunity uh, to interview years ago uh, when I was on Blog Talk Radio. Right, and right. I had a different company at that time, which was Clean Free Fun. Right. Wow. <laughs> and, yeah, time passes. Yep. And that was actually my first company. We were just talking about that, and you were talking about people learning and, and going forward. And that was my learning company. Like, I was like trying to figure out the whole entrepreneurship and, we did and that. everything. You did that really well. Yeah, thank you. I didn't even know you were learning. <laughs> yeah, I was really just kind of figuring out the whole process. But, um, so Marcus has been in business for over nine years now, and uh, why don't you say a little bit why how you got started and uh, what your business was about when you originally started? Okay. Yeah. Well, you know why I got started. It was uh, early two thousand and eight. Okay. And you know the economy was so unstable, right. and you know I happened to be working for a. Uh, boss, um, whom I loved working for, uh -huh. uh, but they were just kind of struggling, mm -hmm. you know, and I found that, uh, to make a long story short, I just needed to get out and do my own thing, to right. have security in uh, income. Right. <laughs> and I'm an entrepreneurial at heart, and I just knew that that kind of helped me to step out on right. the water and just say, you know what, hey, if they can do this, I can do it too. Right. And so from there, I... Uh, put together my business plan and you know I was kind of like what am I going to do and I just you know I'm a praying guy so I kind of prayed about it and I figured you know what you're going to do everything you have experience in you're just mm -hmm. going to put it together under an umbrella and then you're going to run it as an entrepreneur okay. and that's what I, like I did that. put together a business plan went to the banks and fortunately one of my first clients worked at a bank. Oh, nice. And she was a loan officer. Oh, well, that's so, even better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she kind of guided me through the process. Uh -huh. And then uh, my company was awarded funds. Wow, to nice. Open. And so we opened, uh, I think it was April of that year. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And so what, is, what did your company do when you first started? Like, what? what? Good question, good question. Uh, you know, and I can say this with all confidence now but when I was opening you know I was just full of butterflies I guess you know mm -hmm. really unsure and uh, I remember when I opened the company we became a member of the chamber right away okay and so I went down to the chamber and you know the chamber has business breakfast meetings and you stand up you introduce your business to all of these other entrepreneurs mm -hmm. I was new in business and I remember having to stand and talk about the company right uh, and at the time you know, I don't think we had any clients. Okay. And so I had to talk about the services and sell the services with knowing that we were brand new and right. I didn't have clients. <laughs> um, but at that time, the company was doing what we're still doing. You know, mm -hmm. we opened it. Uh, at the time, we were doing hospitality consulting. Okay. That was the main bread and butter when Caliber Enterprises opened. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the business plan had events, it had talent agency, it had uh, PR and branding Okay. Uh, in the business plan. Right. But the initial, you know, pop off or set off was hospitality consulting. Out of the gate, you know, those were our first clients, entrepreneurs that owned restaurants and bars. Uh, they didn't have a lot of experience in that industry mm. and they were looking for a consultant or someone to literally guide them through the process to help, you know, uh, eliminate additional or excess costs unnecessarily and to have the expertise to help them make it right. you know, in building their business and opening their business. So we started off as uh, hospitality consulting. Okay. And then uh, fortunately, you know, we... we went hard into the entertainment industry and mm -hmm. it was good because at the end of 2008 the banks stopped loaning money to entrepreneurs mm -hmm. so you know a restaurateur it costs a lot of money to yeah. open a restaurant and a bar and they couldn't get the loan 
So fortunately, the part of our business that was skyrocketing was the entertainment business mm. here in Atlanta because you know entertainment yeah. here is just on and popping. Right. <laughs> and it just keeps growing. Right. You know, so, you know, we kind of shifted in that direction. Um, you know, but Jackie, the good thing is, is that, you know, my company had so many different industries mm -hmm. under its belt so that regardless of what was going on with the economy or with the business climate, we could shift gears and keep moving. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if one particular industry wasn't doing so well, not a problem. We'll push in this industry. Right. If this industry starts to slow back, not a problem. We'll push mm -hmm. out in this. Right. So, you know, my overall vision of the company was to have all of these industries working side by side, mm -hmm. uh, helping each other to grow. Ooh, nice. And uh, when I launched the company, I launched with a grand opening event. Okay. It was a brand promotional <laughs> I event. I can totally see you doing that, yeah. <laughs> and it was incredible, if I do say so myself. <laughs> it was, check this out, it was at a restaurant who was a client. Okay. It had a fashion show. Right. With a retail client. Okay. It had models in it um, who were modeling with our agency, mm -hmm. and some of the models were modeling with other agencies. Um, and I'm trying to think, and it was an event. So it had the event element, it had the talent agency element, it had the hospitality consulting element, and it had branding PR because mm -hmm. we had to promote the event. Right. So it had all of those industries wrapped up in our launch presentation. Mm -hmm. And that was basically announcing us, you know, to the public in all of those different industries. And it was huge. Mm. And it, it took a lot of work and it cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was worth it. Okay, okay. And then that helped, was like your springboard into developing your company, getting more clients. Because right. other people really saw what you were able to What we were able do. to do. Yeah. Right. Yep. And it was really a great uh, brand launch. Okay. You know, and every business should have a brand launch on mm -hmm. some level. Right. You know, and you really should get with someone who or a company or a firm or you know a consultant that knows how to do this appropriately right because it's all about brand awareness especially when you're an entrepreneur or a small business uh, it's really important for people to know who you are and know what you can do yeah that's definitely true yeah. <laughs> and have word of mouth you know right. referrals for sure yeah that's the biggest thing is like referrals will either bring you business or take it away right, one or right. the other yeah so whatever you do you want to do it at a level of excellence yeah. you know and i find that it's better to do uh less at a level of excellence than mm -hmm. try to do too much and it not be tight right you know and look its best right and i find a lot of entrepreneurs probably spread themselves a little too thin and then end up going in the other direction so. I agree, I agree, and I'll give you a tip. I was just saying this to a client two days ago that, uh, you know, whenever we do business, we, you know, obviously you've heard this many times, I would believe, you know, you want to under-promise and over-deliver. Yeah, I was just thinking that, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to tell a client or a prospect that you're going to give them, you know, the moon and the stars, and you don't have the ability to do that. Right. So it's better to, to be uh, transparent, Mm -hmm. And honest up front, I firmly believe in that. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're going to do, make sure you communicate that very clearly, honest and up front, so that, uh, you know, there's no miscommunication or disappointments right. or delusions. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> On anybody's part. <laughs> right, exactly. So, <laughs> um, and so your company, so speaking about your company and everything, you guys have gone through some transitions in the last three years. Mm -hmm. So can mm -hmm. you share a little bit about that with our audience? I can. I most definitely can. You know, uh, being an entrepreneur is a journey. Okay. And, uh, you know, there's so much material out there about how to do it. But, you know, so many people get it, get into entrepreneurship without doing the homework, you know, and there's different phases in the beginning of a launching a company, you're hustling and you're hustling right. and grinding hard, you know, to get your brand out there, to find clients, to show the community, show the world that you can do the work. Right. Um, and you go through that for a phase just to get some uh, work under your belt, to get some evidence under your belt, to get some income in your accounts. Right. You know, but God willing, 
when you're fortunate to be in business, you know, beyond certain benchmarks, then you have to start working on other aspects of your business. And uh, what happened with our company was, you know, we were still in the grind mode, still servicing clients and whatnot. Uh, but I got to the point, you know, Jackie, that I'm looking at myself and I'm like, we're doing all of this great work for clients, but we needed that work done for us. Right. You know, and it's like, I kind of felt um, hypocritical, maybe a strong word, mm -hmm. you know, not hypocritical towards the clients, but I just felt like I was um, cheating on my own company. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so... Um, Basically, like about three years ago, you know, we're just grinding, great business, great everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I made the decision as an entrepreneur and I said, you know, to my team and, and myself, basically, we're going to pump the brakes and we're really going to start working on the infrastructure of right. the company. Yes. You know, really develop the culture. You know, it's like, okay, we've been, we've been in this game now for, I think it was six years at that point. And it was like, we've been in this game for six years, you know. I have a good understanding of who we are. I have a good understanding of what we do well, mm -hmm. what we shouldn't do. Um, now I have to develop the culture so that I can communicate this greater with the people within the company. Mm -hmm. And so that we as a unified front can communicate this greater to clients, prospects, the community, the world. Mm -hmm. um, and I tell you, Jackie, it's such a relief when you get to that place of entrepreneurship right. where you really know your brand, yeah. where you really know how your company works. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not, you know, walking on water or air so much. Right. You know, you're really walking now on solid ground. You yeah. know, it's like, okay, this is what we do. This is how we do it. You know, either this works for you or this is what you're looking for mm -hmm. or it doesn't. And that's okay, too. Yeah. You know, but um, so basically about three years ago, I really just put in the work to um, build up the culture and infrastructure of Caliber Enterprises. Mm. And that included um, putting together a best practice book. Mm. And, you know, every business, in my opinion, should have a best practice book. And that's like your mantra Bible, your business mm -hmm. Bible. Anybody that's working with you should literally know what that book looks like, mm -hmm. understand the principles within that book, and should be exercising those principles on a daily basis. That's interesting. I've never even thought of that. So what would go into something like that? You don't have to give it all up, just like... I know, you know, because obviously, <laughs> obvious, I'm so glad you asked, because obviously since we do that, that's one of the services that... You guys that, do. Right, but I'd probably have can... to hire you for Because <laughs> with, with, with my assistant, because she's in South Africa, mm. oh, so, wow. yes, you would never know. She's, wow. I know, she's amazing. Wow. So, um, but... Um, so when I need her to do stuff like whether it's managing my group on Facebook because she mm -hmm. does that for me, what I'll do is I do screen shares for her mm -hmm. and the video screen shares and then I put them on our base camp mm -hmm. um, and then I send that to her and okay, this is what you need to do. These are the passwords to get in. I love it. So on and so forth. So that's kind of how my best friend I love it. Been. I love it. Since she's not in the same country, you know, we had, so she knows exactly what I want. And how I exactly want it done. I love it. I, yeah. You know, kudos to you for having someone all the way in Africa. I yeah. mean, that's, that's incredible. That's yeah. making our large world, right. you know, yes. small and workable. Um, but in answer to your question, you know, it takes a minute. It takes a minute to understand what your practices are. And you mm -hmm. know how you learn your practices? You learn them either two ways. Either you can hire, you know, a specialist to come in and troubleshoot with you mm -hmm. and give you many different questions and circumstances and practices, you know, for you to go through to get answers to help guide you. Mm -hmm. Or you learn through the suffering of the experience. Right. What do I <laughs> Which most people, that's how they learn, is through the suffering. Well, but which you have to do that, really. Well, you know, you'd be surprised because there are some entrepreneurs that go through suffering and they'll repeat the same right. suffering and they'll never learn and it's painful, but they never make the conscious effort to say, you know what? That hurt and it hurt hard. And I never want to go through that again. Right. So what am I going to do? I'm going to analyze why it hurt. 
I'm going to understand how I contributed to it hurting mm -hmm. me so badly. And I'm going to make sure that I rewrite the script or I rework what I did so that I don't do it again and I get a different outcome mm -hmm. so that it doesn't hurt the next time. Right. You know, and the thing is about that, you have to be conscious enough and not moving, you know, 10,000 miles a second, you know, to really have the ability to, to do that process. And so many entrepreneurs are moving so fast. You know, especially restaurant entrepreneurs. Yeah. Like, oh my God. You know, they're just running like a chicken with their heads cut off, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of them. Um, and you can't evolve in your practices if you're moving at that pace. Right. Because you don't have the time to analyze, slow down, and correct what you didn't do before. Right. And so that's why, again, not to do a shameless plug, but you know, <laughs> entrepreneurs can call us and hire us to help them uh, with their best practices or, you know, over a period of time, you know, that entrepreneur is ultimately going to have to make a conscious effort to slow down right, and to analyze what they're doing right, right, and to keep doing that and then to rewrite the script for what they're not doing right and then... But, Regardless of what you do, it does require writing it down. Right. Because you're going to have to write it down because you're going to have to be able to share that with your team. Right. If you don't have it written down, then you spend so much business time when you right. could be making money versing your team. Right. But if you have it written down, your team can read it right. <laughs> while you're still making money. Kind of like a handbook or something like that, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. That's what exactly. I was thinking about when you were talking about that. So it, it is and it isn't. Like an employee handbook is like uh, what the company expects from an employee. Yeah. A best practice book is similar, but it's it's a little bit more strategic and it's a little bit more mature. You know, mm. it's it's more you're a partner of the company and you have to understand the strategy of why the company does certain things. Mm -hmm. You know, an employee handbook kind of gets them on with the dream and the vision and right. and the emotional aspect of the company, right? So that way they can have the buy-in and then that way they feel they they would represent it as if it's their own. Exactly. Okay. And that way Makes you sense. guys are all working seamlessly together in oneness. Yeah. And that is the greatest success uh, tool for a company. Yeah. When I your whole team works in oneness. Yeah. And you're not, you know, when you can complete my sentence. Yeah. You know, when you can respond to an email without me having to verse you on every word. <laughs> right. Right. You know, when you understand right. the, 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 the essence of how we would handle something. Right. And that is the hardest thing for an entrepreneur to do, to get their team to feel the essence and to emulate your essence, right. whether you're there or not. Right. Yeah. I would agree with that. So I feel like Bianca and I are oneness. <laughs> yeah. No, you are. Yeah. You are. Yeah. Because AJ and I are too. And dealing with you guys... Um, you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I enjoyed it. So she's awesome. And so some of the things that I do with my team is we'll also just give them um, shouts out and thanking them for like I did that earlier today. Um, like my videographer, my graphic designer, Bianca, and then here World Star Hit Radio and just thanking them for mm -hmm. everything that they do for me because we don't live on this planet alone. We can't right. do it by ourselves. So, I, you know, I it. love that you say that because that's a best practice. You right. know, that's something to write in your culture book. It's so important to applaud your team. Yeah. It's so important to consciously daily tell them the things that they're doing well. Yeah. And to tell them the things that you appreciate because that, you know, lets them know that you value them. Right. And the more your team knows they are valued, the greater productivity they will provide for right. the business. Right. <laughs> so, and so now that you've kind, you guys have gone through this transition, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And you've um, obviously everything that you guys have learned as well for your own company, you've written it down. Right. You've put some policies and procedures behind it, and now you're offering it to other people. <laughs> and now we sell that, <laughs> <laughs> which is great. Right. right. Which and, is great. And we sell it to our clients. Like I was with a client the other day. You know, a lot of our clients clients, um, you know, whether they actually own businesses or whether they're uh, uh, 
entertainers mm -hmm. or celebrities or whatever, you know, they all have a business, whether it's their brand, whether it's a, a standing facility, mm -hmm. you know, a medical practice, a spa, whatever, you know, they need um, like-mindedness. They right. need consulting. They need coaching. So they love when I come around to share these jewels because yeah. they're all still moving so fast right so when I do my work and invest these jewels into them then they can go ahead and, and put them in operation within their own business right you know or they can um, if they don't have the time to do that then we will go into their business and implement it and make sure that it's alive and well and mm -hmm. functioning before we pull out right you know and that's the thing about consulting you know people don't realize that you're going to save money if you hire someone who knows what they're doing and right. you give them some time to put it in place. They're not going to stay there forever. No. You know, give them a couple of months to put it in place. The productivity of your company is going to grow, you know, just incredibly. Right. As opposed to you continuing to do what you were doing before without right. that growth margin. Right. Because you're kind of putting like you're like right here so when you have the console it puts a step up here mm -hmm. so that way you can continue to grow and, and now you've created like a higher foundation mm -hmm. for your company and more efficient and more processes right. and procedures and certain things like that. And the company runs more smoothly so you have fewer headaches, less right. stress right. and now you can take all that energy where you were you know putting out red you had red flags and problems and all that you can take all of that energy and put it into productive revenue building right instead of you know, putting out the fires constantly and exhausting yourself and then not right. having energy after that to go after the new revenue streams. Right. <laughs> One of my clients, he uh, was telling me that, uh, he's like, yeah, I was like, I'm trying, I've been so busy trying to get things together. He's like, because I'm going to be gone for a month. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, excuse me, where are you going? He's like, Italy. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. I right. was like, well, have fun. But he's already put down the foundation. He has teams running, his managers, everything in place yeah. to be able to go. He works his behind off oh, okay. to be able to go and travel for a month right. to Italy. That's smart. So, have, question, have you done modeling before? Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes, tell. yes, yes. You can tell in your pictures and stuff like that. You're yeah. just always very... Photo, when you are very photogenic, but you have the poses and just... <laughs> well, you know, I appreciate so. that. That's part of the background. Yeah. And, you know, it's so funny when we opened up the talent agency, mm -hmm. no one, unless you knew me really well, you didn't know that I modeled. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I really just revealed that to, like, the people that I work with maybe three years ago. Oh, really? Yeah, like I... I, I kind of figured that before when I first met you, like through social media and mm -hmm. stuff, just based off your pictures and the fact that you were always with models. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> well, you're smart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was like three years ago, probably Instagram, and like I was doing a selfie because I hadn't really gotten into the whole selfie thing. <laughs> and just one day I just started taking a selfie and it wasn't working. <laughs> And then I'm like, wait a minute, I know what to do. And then I did this and I did, and I'm like, and then it's like I had a brain fart. It's like, I used to model. Right. Marcus, you totally forgot your previous life. Right. <laughs> because I was so engrossed in the clients, the company. Right. It's like, and, and helping all the other talent. It's mm -hmm. like, wait a minute, you used to model. You know what you're doing. Right. And so at that point, I dug through all of my stuff. I found my old portfolio. I found old work and, and I just started posting it. And, you know, all of our talent, you know, I haven't really talked to anybody about mm -hmm. it, but I'm sure they were shocked because yeah. I don't think they knew that I had walked in their shoes. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So I had knowledge with experience. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that I was going to ask you, so now that you've set up everything well, where you're at. a client, an event client having a need for talent. Mm -hmm. That's an overlapping, right? You know, um, a branding business client having a need for an event, you right. know, to do a grand opening. That's overlapping. So, um, you know, the branches overlap, uh, Jacqueline, but I would like to see them doing that more consistently. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing is for us to do more work um, around the country and okay. around the world. Um, we do work in other cities, you know, and I always love that. Like I said, I just got back from Dallas. Um, I love Dallas. Yeah, it was actually my my second time going to Dallas. I didn't remember the first. Uh, I was traveling cross country. But to do more work in other cities, mm -hmm. um, 
And I gotta give you some, I gotta give you an answer that really means a lot to me. Those two mean a lot. Uh, probably just to grow in our new culture, mm -hmm. you know, because we've only had it literally for the past two and a half years, mm -hmm. you know, the first, and let me tell you this, um, to develop a culture, it took us a year and a half, mm. a year and a half of grinding, yeah. <laughs> you know, so we're just now living that new culture. Mm. And when I tell you my life is so different. Mm. Like, it's so much more enjoyable. Mm. You know, being an entrepreneur, I love it so much more now than I did before. Mm -hmm. um, I actually am getting proper rest. <laughs> That's important. I'm getting proper rest. Yeah. I'm getting proper exercise. I'm eating properly. You know, at one point, you said I modeled. At one point, you know, I looked at myself. Like, when I said I was taking a selfie, that was where I had gained weight. I didn't recognize my. It seemed like my whole life never really happened mm -hmm. because I was in the phase of entrepreneurial grind. Yeah. You know, and your whole body just, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. What matters is grinding. Right, right. <laughs> you know, to grow. Um, so I guess probably it's just to continue to grow in our new culture and it's 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 amazing when I tell you it's amazing to see a problem and to know exactly what to do right without something coming to you and not having any point of reference for how to handle it right <laughs> when I tell you it's that, amazing it's like everything comes now it's like quick 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 before it was like oh okay we got to figure this out I'm not sure we got to we don't now have, you have more of a solid foundation to put together. Yeah. So now if someone wanted to hire Caliber Enterprises, because we have like maybe one minute left. Okay. So if someone wanted to hire Caliber Enterprises and um, learn more about what you do, how can they find out more about you? Well, that's a great question. Uh, I would suggest going to the website, and that's Caliber Elite Consulting.com. I know okay. it's a long one, but it's C-A-L-I-B-E-R-E-L-I-T-E consulting.com okay um, or you can call us at the office 404-824-7991 404-824-7991 I don't call that number right. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to remember it or you can find us on uh, social media you know I have a, a direct Instagram page it's um, at caliber e c-a-l-i-b-e-r e for enterprises mm -hmm. Um, we're on Facebook, Caliber Enterprises. We're on Twitter. But they can find all that through your website anyway. So exactly. All your social media. So, yep. so yep. it's awesome. So, well, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show well, today. Well, thanks, thanks. Thanks for having me. 30 minutes went really fast. It really did. So, I love talking about yeah. business. <laughs> I know, I do too. <laughs> and I love talking with you. <laughs> Thanks. so pretty. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and so, everybody, thank you so much for uh, coming and listening in on the show today. Please reach out to Caliber Enterprises and um, hire him if you're looking to take your business to the next level. Yes. And uh, please stay tuned for our show for next Tuesday at 7.30. And um, have a wonderful evening. The hottest music. R&B. Hip-hop pop. Old school. Side, side. <laughs> Check it. And sports talk. Right here. WorldStarHitRadio.com.